Murphy News. Creighton Blue Jay Basketball on KMTV, your Action 3 news station, is brought to you by Lexus of Omaha. Good afternoon from Carver Arena in Peoria, Illinois. If the arena looks empty, that's because it is. Today's game between the Bradley Braves and Creighton Blue Jays moved from 7 o'clock until 3 o'clock this afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Travis Justice, my broadcast partner again. His former Blue Jay standout, Nick Vaughn. Nick, this has been a really weird day. We woke up this morning, think we were doing a game at 7 o'clock tonight. Then around 10 o'clock this morning, we got word that Bradley wanted to move it because of the weather from 7 o'clock until 3 o'clock. So essentially, the mojo, should we say, of the Blue Jays and the Braves has been thrown off today. Yeah, very different day. Obviously, your prep time goes down, not as much film. And your shoot around was a lot shorter. And whatever game day routine you may have is definitely thrown out the window. It's a very different day, but I talked to all the guys. They all seem fine with it. You sometimes sitting around in that hotel can get a little long, gets a little boring. You just want to play that game, and they're going to be able to do that right now. You know, atmosphere will be key today because uh, Carver Arena has always been known as a hostile atmosphere. But, you, you know, we were taking bets uh, <laughs> uh, how many people are actually going to show up. It, it's going to be less than 2,000 people here. What does that do? Because Creighton usually plays well in a hostile environment yeah I was always the type of guy that I'd rather have the arena be packed on the road than somewhat empty I think no matter what you got to bring your own energy and with no energy in the building it even makes that even more so so it's gonna be a little bit of weird dynamic obviously different start time and a very empty Carver arena this afternoon time now for our players to watch brought to you by Lexus of Omaha and for the Bradley Braves it's Andrew Warren. This guy can score from all places on the court, and he can light it up, averaging 19 points per game. Valley's leading scorer leads the Valley in free throws made and three-point field goals made. This guy is a tremendous scorer, and he has to play well for Bradley to win the game. Look for him to get a lot done. Everything they do on base and out of bounds in the half court and in transition is to find number 24 for Bradley. He can flat out fill it up. Now the Blue Jays beat the Braves back in Omaha earlier this month, 81-68. Josh Jones had a career night with 14, but Gregory Echenike, big double zero with 17 points in that first game. And really all the big guys played well in that game, but in particular Gregory Echenike was very efficient in what he did. And he's going to be going up against freshmen and more skilled big guys that aren't as big and beefy as big Gregory Echenike is. So I know Greg McDermott likes to play through the big guy. I think even more so a steady diet of Gregory Echenike is going to be much needed. No one can handle him in the block if he gets close to the basket and wants to score the ball. He needs to have a big game. You know, 2006, the Bradley Braves made the Sweet 16 in the NCAA tournament. This year, 0-11 in the Missouri Valley Conference, an 11-game losing streak, their longest since 1954 and 1955. It's an afternoon of hoops. The Blue Jays and the Braves coming up next on KMTV Action 3 News. Back to Carver Arena where we have an afternoon showdown between the Creighton Blue Jays and the Bradley Braves. Now the starting lineups. First, the Bradley Braves, Andrew Warren. He can do it all. He leads the Missouri Valley Conference in scoring. He can shoot three three-pointers. He does it all. Dodie Dunstan, Will Egoff, Dyrika Sims-Edwards, and Jordan Prosser. For the Blue Jays, going with Doug McDermott, Gregory Echenike, Caleb Korver, Josh Jones back into the starting lineup. And, of course, the glue, the point guard, is Antoine Young. The Braves are 6-16 six and 16 overall. 0-11 in the Missouri Valley Conference, coached by Jim Less in his ninth year at Bradley with 148 wins and 136 losses. The Blue Jays 14-9 overall, 6-5 in the Missouri Valley Conference, coached by Greg McDermott in his first year on the Hilltop. However, overall in 10 years of Division I coaching, 163 wins, 140 losses. Time now for our keys to the game, brought to you by Dylan Brothers Harley. Here's my friend, here's your friend, Nick Ma. <laughs> All right, let's start with the Bradley Braves. Key number one, they got to defend the big boys in their previous meeting 10 days ago. Go. Gregor Echenique, Kenny Lawson Jr., and Doug McDermott combined for 44 points and 22 rebounds. Key number two is pace. They got to speed the game up. Bradley's a team that lacks size, so they're going to struggle in the half court. They got to get up and down the floor. Key number three is confidence. Again, 0 and 11 Valley play. They got to get going. And for the Creighton Blue Jays, defend dribble penetration. They're going to be driving the ball at you all game long. Key number two, limit turnovers. Got to take care of the ball. And key number three is make Andrew Warren a volume score. Make him take a lot of shots to get his points. He's going to make shots. You got to just contest and make him work. And those are your keys. Thank you, Nick. Bob, those keys brought to you by Dylan Brothers Harley. Time now for our XL Physical Therapy Injury Report. And uh, Bradley really been rattled by injuries all season long. Taylor Brown has taken a medical red shirt, as is Sam Maniscalco, who is, uh, you know, he was really the, the heart and soul of this Bradley team. Of course, Ethan Rogge and uh, Casey Harriman for the Blue Jays dealing with season-ending injuries. And then those are your 
Injury Report brought to you by XL Physical Therapy. It's your choice. Choose XL Physical Therapy. It's just after 3 o'clock, and we are ready for basketball in Peoria, Illinois. Thanks for tuning in on this blustery day in Omaha and a blizzardy day in Peoria. And the opening tip goes to the Braves. Well, we're going to find out real quick who's ready to play, who's dealt with the change and tip off. Got to get yourself ready to go no matter what, Travis. Egoff right around Doug McDermott, but uh, misses. It's going to be off of the Braves, and Blue Jays get the basketball. Creighton really took it to the Braves. Led by 25 at one point a couple weeks ago. Braves got into it late, made it somewhat respectful at 81-68. Made 10 threes, shot 60% from the floor in the first half. Got up huge, really never looked back. Josh Jones. With soft hands of McDermott goes off the Braves, so the Blue Jays going to have 10 on the shot clock. Plenty of time to get something out of the out-of-bounds play. Now this would be interesting because there's nobody in Carver Arena. <laughs> I hear everything everybody's saying. And Greg McDermott is right next to us, and we hear everything that he's saying. McDermott with six, throws it out of bounds. You can hear Greg McDermott say, take him, take him, take him. He thought they had a mismatch there. Well, yeah, the shot clock was low, and that's a situation where you got to understand the situation. Shot clock gets under five. Everybody on the floor is going to be assuming you're going to take the shot, so they're going to be working for that rebounding position. Doug's got to take the little 10-foot float. If you're tuning in right now looking for Dr. Phil, no need to worry. It will be on later on tomorrow morning at 2.07 as Prosser gets the dunk in the early lead for the Braves. And then Oprah will follow at 3.07 a.m. So if you've got the DVR, set it for early tomorrow morning at 2.07 and 3.07. Horber for three. In and out. He needs to shoot. In the past two games, he only has one field goal attempt. If Caleb Corver's going to be on the floor as a shooter. He's got to let him flop. Cody Dunson. 4 nothing Braves. Dangerous team. Again, don't let the record fool you. 0-11, but they're a very athletic team. Explosive, excellent in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Etchenike. He'll go to the free throw line. Etchenike on the season. A 69% free throw shooter. That's a matchup he can win all day. Absolutely. And you saw they tried to run Dunson at him from behind for a double team. They're going to give him different looks all game long in terms of crowding the post or running doubles at him. He's got to be ready to be strong with the ball and handle it because they're going to run offense right through big double zero right there. And that's where they got to go. They got no answer for him. It's going to be a freshman trying to go at him. Or Will Egolf at 6'9", and he's more skilled. Or they're going to bring in big Anthony Thompson, whose nickname is Sticks. So that speaks about how, how big he is. It's been a close series. Creighton leads the all-time series with the Braves 42-40. to CU's won 19 of the last 23. Sims Edwards. Dyrikis Sims Edwards for three. Mr. Hot, Mr. Cold, Dyrika Sims Edwards. That's a great sign for Jim Les. He's a guy that's been able to score, but he's also been able to disappear in certain games. And he's a dangerous, dangerous guy when he gets going. Tough pass by Corver, and it comes up and it's a turnover. Here come the Braves. Another three pointer. This one by Andrew Warren. And just like that, it's an eight point Bradley lead. And Greg McDermott wants a timeout. This is what he was afraid of. Slow not, not saying it wouldn't have happened at 7 o'clock, but the mojo has been thrown off with this team. Well, this team has struggled with slow starts all year long, and you can see them in transition. Dyrika Sims Edwards got his head up, and I told you that whether they're in transition or the half court or whatever, they're going to look for that young man right there, Andrew Warren. Great score, and clearly Bradley's uh, a wounded animal right now, an upset team. Again, 0-11 in Valley play their worst start here longest losing streak since 1954 1955 that's a long time ago travis so they're an upset group and they're a dangerous team they can score but it starts with getting them in space that's where they're terrific so in transition they're going to see it a lot of times they're going to be pushing it and then they're just going to want to dribble penetrate at all times 
So we'll see what the Blue Jays can do after the quick 30-second timeout. Not the start the Jays were hoping for. With all those jerseys in the paint, trying to just provide backside help. Gregory Achenike. The Jays made 10 threes last time they played the Bradley Braves. I would assume Jim Les is going to dare him to do the exact same thing. Eight on the shot clock. John Hens Managa. Now to Echenique. Three on the shot clock. Managa for three. And out of bounds as McDermott stepped on the end line. That's not a bad possession right there. You got the ball where you wanted to again. You want a steady die to Gregory Echenique, and you got a good look for Jahans Mana guy who shot the ball well from downtown. Again, got the nod, starting nod last game. He's 8 of 17 from three in Valley play. Warren, little one-hander off the front of the rim. Fight for the rebound goes to Echenique. Antoine Young. Managa for three. Jahens Managa off the back of the rim, but Echenique is there for the follow-up dunk. That's a good push from Antoine Young, and again, Managa, great look, and Doug McDermott has got his hand on some offensive rebounds about three different times now, and Echenique is the beneficiary of that. Andrew Warren, Travis E, possesses the rare combination to be able to move and score with screens and can beat you off the dribble. Out of bounds, going to be great in basketball. Walt Lemon Jr. coming into the game for Bradley. One thing you got to watch as this game goes along, and, and Bradley early on in Omaha kept up with the Blue Jays, but depth became a problem. I mean, the, the injuries have really plagued the Bradley Braves. And that's the problem. They are, don't have the luxury of a great bench. You know, their top seven is pretty talented, but after that it gets pretty limited, and that's the issue is they're a team that wants to play fast, but do they have the depth to do so? Back out to Jahens Managa. Missed badly. That's an air ball by the Canadian Red Bull. As there you go. Nick Baugh has, knew it was gonna stick. has dubbed him. <laughs> Timeout on the floor. 15.42 to go before halftime. It's the Bradley Braves 10, the Great Blue Jays 4. Back to an empty Carver Arena after these messages. Your children, they're your pride and joy. And you've told us how important their education and well-being are to you. So all February, KMTV Action 3 News takes a close look at school safety. From the bus ride to weapons in school, KMTV Action 3 News shows you potential dangers every parent needs to know. And what you can do to make sure your little scholars are in good hands when they head to class and come home safely. Watch our Safe at School reports every Thursday at 10 and only on KMTV Action 3 News. Let Cox Wireless help you embrace the magic of Valentine's Day with an unbelievably fair offer for you and your sweetheart. Hurry in now for the Cox Valentine's Day sale where you can get an HTC Wildfire or Samsung Profile free. And only Cox Wireless gives you money back minutes. Money back each month for minutes you don't use. For these unbelievably fair offers and more, visit a Cox Solutions store. Now with eight convenient locations to serve you. Bigger or better? Every day we choose one over the other. Owned and operated by local physical therapists, Excel Physical Therapy works hard to give you nothing but the best. Sophisticated, proven treatments made better with friendly, personal attention. Excel Therapy knows you have a choice when it comes to physical therapy, and we treat you like it every minute of every visit. Excel Physical Therapy, the special treatment you deserve. I gotta be honest, Dick Bob, there are more people here than I thought there was going to be today. I completely agree. I was expecting a, a worse showing than this, so this is good to see. There's actually some blue in the house as well. That it, uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting day in Peoria as the snow is falling, the blizzard is taking place outside, and we are stuck in Peoria, we know, for tonight. But uh, Blue Jays down 10-4. Take a look at this replay as Gregory Echenique uh, in the right place at the right time. But it's all about Doug McDermott. He makes that happen. Lots of times, great offensive rebounds. They just pursue the ball, and they have a knack for being in the right place at the right time. If you just go after every rebound, even if you don't get it, you're going to keep it alive, and often good things are going to happen for you. 
Early shooting the difference is the Braves shooting 57% for the field. Four of seven, the Blue Jays just one of five. Keep an eye on Andrew Warren. Just doing some different things to run him off some screens. And this is a guy who I really like, Walt Lemon Jr. Not a great perimeter shooter, but really explosive driving to the basket. Daryl Ashford in the ball game for the first time. They got to get something out of him. They need to get some senior leadership out of him. They call him Sleepy. He plays with that kind of laid-back, cool attitude, but he needs to get going, realize he's only got so many games left as a Creighton Blue Jay basketball player. He's got to start performing. Ten on the shot clock for the Blue Jays. Now five, and Ashford takes it. Missed badly. they got to get a shot off. Shot clock violation. Bradley's done an outstanding job of making Creighton work offensively. There's been about three or four possessions that's got right down to the final five seconds of the shot clock before Creighton could even get a field goal attempt. That's just great defense. Egoff. Well, jump balls could belong to the Blue Jays. Anthony Thompson is fighting for the rebound there. The sticks right there. He's really thin. But you can see E-Golf is a finesse player. He wants to take fadeaway jumpers. He's got range to about 17 feet. He's not going to take it at you on the block. He's going to fade away. So Creighton's got to make sure they stay aggressive early in the shot clock. They can't, can't get total tunnel vision throwing it into Echenique and McDermott. They still got to be aggressive in their pursuit of throwing it inside. Kick. Blue Jays have had eight possessions already, Nick, four turnovers. That was a concern. That was one of the keys to the game was taking care of the ball. Some this Jays team had been doing a great job of, but the last two games ever since averaging 17 turnovers a game. That about this gonna belong to Creighton and a fresh 35. Good officiating crew today. You got Mark Whitehead, Eric Curry, and Jerry Pollard. Experienced crew called many NCAA tournament games. They were worried about the officials in the blizzard, but this crew did not work last night or the night before, so they got uh, plenty of time to get here. McDermott for three. Another weapon in the arsenal of Doug McDermott. And that's where he's really changed things in Valley play. Now shooting four, better than 44% from three in conference. So he's really, really stepped his game up from beyond the arc. Great defense from Josh Jones, staying down. And this is where they do that little weave action. you got to communicate switches and close up that gap. Or you can just fight through it like Antoine Young. Ten on the shot clock for the Braves. Look at the defense by the Blue Jays. Egoff inside. And the Blue Jays come up with a defensive stop. Great possession defensively for Creighton. No foul. As here come the Braves in transition. And Daryl Ashford with a big block. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky, sleepy right there. Ashford goes up to the top floor for this one. Look at this. Another look at it. Give me that right there. Perfect timing. Braves still with the basketball. 13.07 to go in the first half. 29 on the shot clock. Braves in a little bit of scoring run. Led 10 2 at one point. As you see, they've made him play in the half court. There's Warren. Rebound to McDermott as Kenny Lawson into the game. That's a weird, that's a timing pass where Josh Owens got to probably have a two foot jump start and deliver it. Can't be dribbling and passing at the same time. It sends Edwards and knocks it down. Those are the points off turnovers. Josh Jones, not the best passer in the world by any stretch of the imagination. He's got to make sure the timing of when he delivers the ball inside is when Lawson expects it. Much better timing there and see McDermott can do something. He's got Eastman on him. That's a major mismatch. Another miss by the Blue Jays. Here come the Blue Jays after the Bradley miss. Both teams seem out of sync. 
Josh Jones in and out. He had a big game against the Braves the first time around in Omaha, career high 14. This is where he had his coming out party last year. Got an opportunity because of the off the court issues with P. Allen Stinnett. This was the place last year where he kind of exploded and put the team on his back and never looked back for the rest of the season in terms of his shot, hot shooting. He's keeping the Braves in the perimeter, 10 on the shot clock. Sims Edwards. Blue Jays got to take advantage of these opportunities. They buttoned some things up defensively and made them work. They just can't seem to convert on this end right now. Kenny Lawson Jr. in and out. Jays have missed some good looks, Travis. Watch Doug McDermott on the defensive end, Nick. Seven rebounds already for the freshman. Am I surprised? No, I'm not. Good cut, see? Great movement without the ball there from Warren. We're letting him play at Carver Arena. Corver with a rebound. I like the way they're letting him play. Yeah, I'd much rather have them as start you being consistent. Rather have an air on the side of letting it go. Antoine Young rattles one in. Blue Jays down three. Amazing with Antoine Young, the type of year he's having. He already has 103 assists on the season. He had 105 for his entire sophomore year. Goes to show you the difference in terms of him distributing the ball this year. Warren. Off the top of the backboard, going to be Blue Jay basketball. Timeout on the floor. We're at the midway point of the first half. 9.59 to go before the break. The Blue Jays within striking distance, down three, back to Carver Arena right after these messages on KMTV Action 3 News. It was just a normal day until... What is this? If you have something no. like this backing up in your basement, call Burton Plumbing. Get Mommy the phone. Your Burton technician will quickly diagnose and solve all of your drain problems. Right now, Burton is offering $99 mainline drain opening. Let Burton Plumbing take care of the pain in your drain. All gone. Since when does using less cheese, less toppings, and knocking off a few bucks become a value? I've got five new value deals that don't compromise on quality. Pick the pizza, pick the size, with the quality you expect from Godfather's Pizza. Real cheese, fresh dough, toppings piled high. Five value deals you can't refuse, starting at $4.99. Get wise. Don't compromise. Godfather's Pizza. Do it. Old McDonald's had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had some pigs. Oh, wait a minute, he doesn't have pigs anymore. Oh. And on that farm he had some cows. Ah, uh, sorry, no more cows. And on that farm he had nope. some... Um, was it cluck cluck? Sorry, no more chickens. You see, the grown-ups didn't speak up when animal agriculture was threatened here in Nebraska. What? So the animals left. Meat prices went up. Huh? Remember, you can give this story a happy ending. Support animal agriculture in Nebraska. The Blue Jay faithful have made it to Peoria, Illinois. Bless them because it's nasty outside. It is really, really bad. Not what we'd call a shooting expedition or exp exposition going on at uh, Carver Arena. Here's uh, Antoine Young hitting the jumper, but the Blue Jays just 3 of 13 for the field. Bradley now 5 of 17. They've got ice cold. In fact, the Braves have just two points in the last seven and a half minutes. It's been an ugly going for both squads, and Creighton, not only are they shooting a poor percentage, 3 of 13, as you said, but have five, five turnovers and only one team assist. Very different first half compared to the last time these two teams played as the Jays again shot 60% from the field and had a 49 to 24 advantage going into halftime at the Quest Center Omaha. Not the story right now. This is kind of how I expected it to be. I think you'll see a much more crisp played second half for both teams. Just they're kind of getting the juices going right now. Travis Justice, Nick Ball with you in Peoria, Illinois. Afternoon hoops on KMTV Action 3 News. Game moved up to an earlier start because of the bad weather. You're getting it in Omaha, you're getting it here in Illinois. Up to 24 inches expected in Peoria. Ugh. There's Antoine Young. 
Blue Jays down one. He's pretty good at that shot. Going to his left, obviously a left-handed player. If they're not, if they're not going to get out and edge that ball screen and slow number 30 down, he'll come off that and take a couple rhythm dribbles and shoot that shot all game long. Blue Jays know how to win here. Winners of seven of the last nine games in Peoria. That's a heck of a heck of a stat for the Blue Jays. Not too many teams can say that. Marika Sims Edwards. They're going to call it a two. Seven points now for Sims Edwards. Be good. There's skip pass. Everybody flows over to help on Echenique, and you bury it. Great offense. And that's a great job by Managas seeing the whole picture. A little ball fake inside, draws the defense. Everybody into the paint. You skip it to the opposite side, and Corver knocks it down. And now we're tied at 14. Big bucket by Caleb Corver. Tyrikus Sims Edwards, back to back buckets. 19 points the last time these two teams played. Averaging 10 points per game. Pretty good score. Runnels. He's a guy that just can't quite find his role and his niche on this team yet. He's a great kid, great player. He can't quite get comfortable. Crosser gets his own rebound. That's an AK. Not going to let that one go. Managa for three. They started chanting the air ball, and Jahan's Managa says nothing but air right through that net. And Blue like Jays that. now with their first lead of the game at 17-16. And something you saw there was Daryl Ashford was at the scores table set to check in for Giants Managa because Managa knocked that down. Greg McDermott calls Ashford back. I like that. You let a guy knock one down, see if he can't get another one. See if it pays off. Keep your eye on number 12 for Creighton. See if he can get another tread. With a team that's lost 11 straight, if you can smack him in the mouth right here, that can really deflate their confidence that they started out early. Absolutely. That's a great point, Trent. Timeout on the floor, but the Blue Jays have their first lead of the game, 17-16 over the Braves. Back to Peoria right after these messages on KMTV Action 3 News. Vivace, 11th and Howard in the heart of the old market. At U.S. Cellular, we noticed some wireless companies make you wait two years for a new phone. Switch to U.S. Cellular and get rewards like faster phone upgrades. Because we believe you should be able to get a new phone in months, not years. U.S. Cellular, with The Belief Project. Hey, I am really distracted by this sandwich. I'm probably going to veer in your lane. Watch out. Oh, excuse me. I'm putting my makeup on, so I'm probably going to cut you off. Oh, hey, guys. I'm going to be talking on the phone when I'm backing out, so I won't be paying attention. Accidents don't announce themselves. That's why we've engineered our SUVs to help protect you with 360 degrees of safety. See Lexus of Omaha and Lexus of Lincoln. Blue Jays, three of 10 from behind the three-point line, Nick Bob, but uh, when they get good looks, they seem to knock them down. It's about seeing the whole picture, and when you have a big fella inside that anchors it, you know what to do. Freeze it right there, watch 24, and Dodie Dunson right there, number one, as they slide over to provide backside help for Echenique and Jake Eastman guarding him. You throw the skip pass to Caleb Corver, you knock it down. That's beautiful offense. That's seeing the whole picture where your number one option was to throw it inside. You drew the help, you skip it, Corver buries it, 
offensive execution for the Jays. The most impressive stat of the day. Um, we are now at the 6.58 mark of the first half, and there have been two fouls called this entire first half. These, I don't think these officials want to be here any longer <laughs> than they have to be. I don't think the fans want to be here any longer than they have to be. We're here. Yeah, yeah. we're not going yeah. anywhere. <laughs> we're right back to the NBC Suites right after this. <laughs> but it's, it's honestly, Crane does a pretty good job of not fouling, but Bradley's a very aggressive team and tries to drive it at you, so it's a little bit perplexing to see those two fouls on the call. Dodie Dunson puts the Braves back on top. Obviously, Dodie Dunson was at Iowa State with Greg McDermott, transferred here to Bradley. I saw them right before the game, even right before the jump ball. They ran over and hugged each other, and obviously still got a great relationship, and Dodie Dunson's a great young man. Corver. When you see Caleb shoot, if he catches in rhythm, he seems to knock it down. He hesitated right there. Do you notice that in it when he takes the three? And it it's boggles my mind a little bit how a guy of his caliber in terms of shooting isn't constantly ready to let it fly even when he's got an inch of space. Nelson loves driving with his left hand. At the six minute mark. 12 on the shot clock. McDermott with his eighth rebound. I don't think I've ever seen Doug have 10 rebounds in the first half, but he's well on his way. We keep making the argument that he is a first team all conference, but you can't tell me any other way. I think that one got tipped a little bit. It's a good shot, though. He's got to be aggressive to score from outside. Crosser has it blocked by Kenny Lawson. They continue to let him play. Hey, Frost, my dog. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Oh, I think it was pick your seat day at uh, Carver Arena. Everybody's moving. Yeah. Kenny Lawson for three. Look at Doug McDermott just fighting for it. Goes up with that left hand. Doug McDermott. Understands that. More often than not, misses are going to come off to the opposite side of the floor. Doug McDermott gets great position on the backside for a rebound. And how about the versatility to finish with the left hand? He's done that a lot more lately. You saw it twice against Indiana State on Saturday and now once this afternoon. Nine points, five, or five points, nine rebounds, rather, for McDermott. Lawson gets that one. Doug going after everything. That's what he's got to do. It's amazing how you look at You line up Lawson, Echenique, and McDermott, and you ask yourself, who's to get the most rebounds out of these three guys, and you probably pick Doug McDermott last, but he gets the most. Falling away, Antoine Young can't get it to drop. Blue Jays still with a one-point lead at the four-minute mark in the first half. Dyrika Sims Edwards. He's been the bright spot for Bradley. And frankly, everybody's been struggling to score the ball except for him. He's got. 11 of their 20 points now. Forver. He hit one there earlier. That's his favorite spot so far at Carver Arena. 22-20 Blue Jay. That's being ready to shoot in rhythm. Great play from Antoine Young. Nothing too fancy about that, but it's efficient. A foul was called. What is that? A foul was called. Timeout on the floor. The Blue Jays with the lead, 22-20, back to Peoria, Illinois. You're watching Great Blue Jay Basketball on KMTV Action 3 News. Stop by the betting company for our lowest CERTA prices ever. Plus, buy a mattress and get a free HD TV. See store for details. The betting company offers the lowest price. If we can't beat it, we'll pay you $500. The purchase of any new mattresses comes with free delivery, free setup, and free haul away. Sale ends Monday. Stop in at any betting company and receive huge savings, great selection, and incredible values at all six locations. Come to the betting company. You deserve the rest. When temperatures drop, winter cold can actually come right through a typical dual pane window. 
But Champion windows with our exclusive Comfort 365 glass have nearly twice the insulating value of a typical dual pane window, which can help keep the cold outside where it belongs. Right now, save 30% when you buy five or more Champion windows. Call today for a free in-home estimate. When you compare and choose Champion, you win every time. King Kong Restaurant serves the best burgers, fillies, steaks, and gyros in the Midwest. Hey, don't forget the salad. Did I mention our amazing Greek salads? King Kong has single, double, triple, and super Kong burgers to fit any Kong size appetite. And our top prime sirloin steak dinner every Sunday for $7. No gyros, gyros. <laughs> King Kong, we're more than just monkeys. Welcome back to Carver Arena on the campus or in the city of Peoria, Illinois. It's not a, it's an off-campus facility. Uh, but time now for our Marco BMW ultimate drive of the first half. Not so much a drive, but just a, a, a drive of the will, should we yeah. say, of Doug McDermott getting his ninth rebound right there, then watching with the left hand. A tough move. That's our Marco BMW ultimate drive of the first half. 3.24 to go before halftime. Here's what's coming up at halftime. We're going to have a... First warning forecast, it's bad in Omaha, it's bad in Peoria. Also, a Action 3 News update. Nick and I will be back for your halftime stats, analysis, much, much more. But we got three minutes, 24 seconds to go before the halftime buzzer. Blue Jays on top of the Braves of Bradley by two. Keep your eye on number 24 here on base and out of bounds plays, Andrew Warren. For Bradley, they like to do everything to get him shots, so they'll find a way to get him a look here. Look at the work by Egolf. And what's tough about that is there they use Warren as a decoy, use him as a screener, understanding that Caleb Corver, who's guarding him, can't help off him. He can't chuck the the, the cutter to the hoop, which was Egolf, so that's using Warren in different ways. Tied at 22. Inside to big Gregory Echenike. Got too far underneath the hoop. Didn't block his own shot. I never had that ball. Here come the Blue Jays. Corver leading the way. And he has that block. We go on to Creighton. Good awareness by Caleb Corver. He knew that block out yes. Warren for that. Well, he was out of bounds, yeah. too, so he couldn't touch the ball as he was coming back in. Take another look at it. There's the block. You see Corver out of bounds. He did a different blue jay to get to it. Under three to go. Let's go back to this pick and roll action. I think Greg McDermott's found something he likes here. Look at Doug McDermott. Tough move. No foul call. Steal by McDermott. Said you got another one there. You had Caleb Corver opposite for a three. Another tough pass. Timeout. Called by the Braves. Tied at 22. Again, we've seen spurts of good basketball. We've seen spurts of bad basketball. It's been a sloppy game, but again, this is kind of what I expected. Both teams, I, you know, I doubt. You know, if Bradley had a shoot around, it probably was a, a last second one that didn't last very long. I know the, the Creighton Blue Jays shoot around was cut short. The Jays went pretty hard yesterday in practice. So this morning the Jays got up, had breakfast, had a short shoot around, then had a pregame meal, then came right here. So both teams have had their pregame routines thrown off ever so slightly. And I think that's why you've seen some turnovers and some missed shots. And again, I, I can't stress enough how I think this second half is going to be a much more clean played game for both teams. But nevertheless, pretty good effort as 
Bradley again is undersized, so their only hope defensively in guarding the post is to try and work around and try and deflect some passes or even steal it. Well, Lemon Jr. got caught on Doug McDermott, which obviously if McDermott's able to catch the ball in the block, he's going to be really successful against Lemon Jr. And instead, Lemon fights around and steals it and gets a timeout call. Two minutes to go. After the Eagle off miss, here come the Blue Jays. Ashford, not even hesitating, a little flat. But he's really fast and explosive. Doug McDermott now with 10 rebounds, 11 rebounds. and give him eight points, he could get a double-double before halftime. I don't think people appreciate the type of basketball season this guy's had. You don't appreciate greatness when you're in the midst of it, but this is one of the best freshman seasons in Creighton Blue Jay basketball history. with a three-pointer by Dyrikis Sims Edwards. Plays all made by Andrew Warren though. He occupied two defenders in the paint, kicked it out. Sims Edwards with the ball. He's got 14 points in the first half. <laughs> 36 on the game clock, 20 on the shot clock. Warren with it. Out of bounds, gonna to belong to the Blue Jays. So Creighton now can hold for the final shot. Tied at 25. This is where the Blue Jays, you would say after the change, not a bad scenario to be in tied. No, not, not at all. Again, this is a dangerous team. And Bradley had Illinois State beat here and we're, we're up eight with about a minute 30 to go and blew this game. They scored 44 points on the Creighton Blue Jays in the second half at Quest Center Omaha. So they're a, a capable team that just really can't catch a break. And to go. Blue Jays put things into motion. Here's Antoine Young inside. Going to belong to Creighton. So now with 3.7 seconds to go off the out-of-bounds play. Who do you get it to here? I'd get it to Doug McDermott or Kenny Loss and see if he can't go up real quick. This will be a screen. Watch Doug coming back to the ball here. There's McDermott. Out of bounds. The horn sounds. We are tied at 25 at the halftime break. Doug McDermott with 11 points, or 11 rebounds, rather, 8 points. He's been the force for the Blue Jays. Coming up, we have an Action 3 News first morning forecast. Keep you updated on the uh, winter weather conditions. Also, a Action 3 News update. Nick and I'll be back uh, with all the news, analysis, and stats. You're watching Great Blue Jay Basketball on KMTV Action 3 News. American Family Insurance created a special policy called the She Has the Perfect Place. It's going to be a perfect evening. And tonight, in a most unexpected place. She will meet the perfect guy. Policy. Emergency Road Service is one of over 375 products and features we use to create your custom family protection. Is your coverage as unique as your family? American Family Insurance. Bigger or better? Every day we choose one over the other. Owned and operated by local physical therapists, Excel Physical Therapy works hard to give you nothing but the best. Sophisticated, proven treatments made better with friendly, personal attention. Excel Physical Therapy knows you have a choice when it comes to physical therapy, and we treat you like it every minute of every visit. Excel Physical Therapy, the special treatment you deserve. Have you heard? ESPN Radio has moved to AM 590. Mike and Mike and Dominic and Sue with us here. Do you have a nickname? Like what do people just, on, on, when they get to know you, do they call you Endomican all the time? Or do you uh, have nobody story? really calls me by Endomican. Uh, everybody call? calls me Sue. AM 590, Omaha's ESPN Radio. Ah, it's the Herd on ESPN Radio, wherever you may be. And however 
you may be listening to our show. AM 590 is Omaha's new home for ESPN Radio. This is an Action 3 News weather alert day. And good afternoon. Travel across the Midwest, treacherous. I-680 from Fort South shut down briefly this afternoon. It's back open now. And KMTV Action 3 News crews describe the interstate around Omaha really as a demolition derby. You're seeing some of the video. Cars off the road, some overturned, all left until they can be towed away. This is a live look from I-680 and Dodge. As you can see, traffic is moving albeit very slowly as we're at 347 now about 13 minutes in front of four and the evening rush about to get started. Keep your eye on the cancellations on your screen and at action3news.com. UNO and Creighton are both closed now and Bellevue University has canceled classes for tonight. Chief Meteorologist Ryan McPike joining us. What's the very latest? Where is this monster storm headed? Well, it's going to be moving out as we head through tonight, which is some very good news. You see their travel still very slow going out there. Again, a lot of this even goes back to yesterday with the freezing drizzle and then light snow, blowing snow, adding problems, reducing visibility. So we're still under winter storm warning through at least this evening. And then I think wind, cold and blowing snow will take over as our concerns. Because of that, I still have threat tracker in the red tonight into very early Wednesday morning again. Several dynamics of this storm we're going to have to continue to deal with here. Uh, most of the accumulating snow is going to taper off this evening, and I really think at the most another inch or two. So not the most snow we've ever seen, but the winds could gust over 30 miles per hour through at least midnight. That'll blow the snow around, and of course, as temperatures drop to about 5 below tomorrow morning, wind chill factors, are you ready for this, could be as cold as 30 below tomorrow morning and then we quickly improve as we head towards the end of the work week. All right, here's the monster storm again, and we're just on the northwest edge of it. As I expected, lighter snow here, but everybody's seeing wind, reduced visibility with blowing snow. The real heavy snow across eastern Kansas into western Missouri, Kansas City getting bombarded. Uh, parts of central Missouri already over a foot of snow up towards Peoria and Chicago and Illinois. That's going to be the line where some areas could see a foot to as high as two feet of accumulation by the time this pulls out late tomorrow afternoon. Now, fortunately, our accumulating snow will end before that. In fact, it's mainly light snow, but a lot of it's blowing around as we look at our first warning storm tracker across eastern Nebraska and western Iowa, and I really don't see much of a change as we head through most of the evening. So, totals with this, again, northwest of Omaha, most of this has already fallen yesterday, and that will be pretty light. I really think three to five inches, and generally three to four as far as snow accumulation total for us, but a lot of that's going to blow around and continue to cause problems through tomorrow morning, and then the amounts really go up to the south and east over a foot expected down in Kansas City. Another look outside, live from that same vantage point, there's the accident, a lot of traffic moving slow. We're now down to 9 degrees, north winds 22, gusting to 31. Temperatures a little bit either side of 10 degrees right now. Florence reporting 11, Bellevue 12, currently in Elkhorn it is 10 degrees. Other spots about the same, upper single digits to low teens. Papillion right now 11, but the wind chill factor is really nasty. Look at this, already down to negative 11 in Florence. Bennington, you step outside, it feels like minus 7. And negative 5, that's the current wind chill factor in Papillion. So through tonight, snow continues this evening. Again, a little bit of additional accumulation. 5 below, but wind chill factors about 20 to 30 below as north winds stay up from 15 to 25. Sunshine returns tomorrow. The winds will diminish with a high of 8. I still think we'll be talking wind chill factors 0 to 10 below. And just one more look at those snow totals. Again, about 3 to 4 inches here in the metro. Much, much heavier off to the south and east and uh, where they have blizzard warnings through most of Missouri. Winter storm warnings here will turn into wind chill advisories, possibly blowing snow advisories as we head through the overnight. Even yeah. the Blue Jays fans who went to Peoria, they're getting slammed by this storm. Yeah, they may have a hard time getting back even sometime tomorrow, the way it sounds. And the so. drifting has been so severe, it's almost it useless to shovel. It really doesn't seem to do any good. Not much, and that'll continue to be a problem. Okay, more on your travel troubles right after this break. Ring in the new year with new windows that look great and save you money. At Window World, we offer energy efficient windows at a great price. And compared to those other guys, we are simply the best for less. Call Window World today for your free in-home estimate. Have you heard? ESPN Radio has moved to AM 590. Mike and Mike and Endomic and Sue with us here. Do you have a nickname? Like what do people just, on, on, when they get to know you, do they call you Endomic all the time? Or do you uh, have nobody really calls me by Endomic and uh, everybody call calls me Sue. AM 590, Omaha's ESPN Radio. Ah, it's the Herd on ESPN Radio, wherever you may be and however you may be listening to our show. AM 590 is Omaha's new home for ESPN Radio. 
From the look on Mike's face, that little chick's at stake. Hey, what you thought it would be? So, Mike, give you one more. Get a set up for Yeah, it's four Ooh. times a steak. Four times a thick cuts of juicy marinated succulent steak. We all say, wow, that's like a whole honking cow. What is it, Mike? What steak? It's four times a steak. Four times a steak. Four times a steak. Did you miss out on the energy tax credit? Wendell World has a special offer just for you. Receive an instant credit of up to $500 on your new energy efficient window purchase. Set up a free in-home estimate and find out why we are simply the best for less. Your children, they're your pride and joy. And you've told us how important their education and well-being are to you. So all February, KMTV Action 3 News takes a close look at school safety. Safe at School reports every Thursday at 10 on Action 3 News. This is an Action 3 News weather alert day. And you hear this advice often. It is the best advice today. Stay home if you can. We know this much. The interstate circling Omaha, very slick. Here's some video. The Nebraska Department of Roads tells us crews are not sanding or de-icing the interstates. The sand just blows away. The de-icing chemicals cause icy patches and freezing. KMTV Action 3 News crews driving the interstate describe extremely hazardous conditions. Top speeds only about 40 miles an hour. And you know it's bad at Epley Airfield. 24 flights have been canceled both in arrivals and delays. Epley's executive director tells us anyone flying east tonight or tomorrow should expect delays and cancellations. We'll update travel on the road and on the air after the Creighton game. As Ryan mentioned, it's actually worse elsewhere. The winter storm really blows up a few hours south of Omaha. Blizzard warnings stretch cross country from the Midwest to the Mid-Atlantic. This is St. Louis. Plows lined up across the interstates trying to keep up with all that snow. Forecasters warning up to 20 inches of snow will fall in the next 24 hours, creating dangerous travel conditions and power outages. The same story in travel warnings in Oklahoma. And by tonight, this storm moves to Chicago, Indiana, and Ohio. We'll be back after the game with KMTV Action 3 News Live at 5 with updated forecasts as well as road and travel conditions. You can also find that at our website, action3news.com. Don't forget, KMTV is your weather alert station keeping you safe when weather threatens. Be very careful out there. Back to Peoria, 25-25, Creighton and Bradley, the second half, coming up next. Featuring the brightest screen available, the Samsung Mesmerize Android-powered phone is also a dazzling one. It lets you take, watch, and share HD videos, and message faster using swipe technology. Now at U.S. Cellular, get buy one, get one free deals on all Android-powered phones. You'll get a Samsung Mesmerize free when you buy one. Activate both, switch, and get $200 in credit. Only at U.S. Cellular. Since when does using less cheese, less toppings, and knocking off a few bucks become a value? I've got five new value deals that don't compromise on quality. Pick the pizza, pick the size, with the quality you expect from Godfather's Pizza. Real cheese, fresh dough, toppings piled high. Five value deals you can't refuse, starting at $4.99. Get wise. Don't compromise. Godfather's Pizza. Do it. It's one of the most fuel-efficient luxury vehicles. But what good is saving energy if you don't put it to good use? The Lexus HS is rated at a combined 35 miles per gallon, but more importantly, features hybrid technology that harnesses and reuses energy to further power the car. It's much more than fuel efficiency. It's total efficiency. See Lexus of Omaha and Lexus of Lincoln. And welcome back to Carver Arena in Peoria, Illinois. We're at halftime where the Great Blue Jays and the Bradley Braves are tied at 25. Travis Justice, Nick Ball with you on this uh, cold day in Peoria. Of course, the game was supposed to start at 7 o'clock tonight. They had to move it all the way up to 3. It is nasty, nasty weather out there, Nick. Yeah, it's real nasty, and it was kind of a nasty first half as well. It was not pretty. Let's take a look at some of the, at the statistics. And the, the shooting is not that impressive by either team. The Blue Jays 9 of 30. Uh, the Braves 10 of 30. Uh, Creighton 5 of 17 from behind the three-point line. 
Uh, the Braves, three of seven from behind the three-point line. Yeah, and, and when you're sloppy, you got to make it up in other ways. You can either get to the free throw line to overcome some of your turnovers or missed shots, or you can get offensive rebounds, and that's what the Jays did. Eight offensive rebounds in that first half, four of which came by the hands of Doug McDermott. Uh, they have seven second chance points compared to zero for Bradley. Not a good half of basketball for the Jays, but they were able to make up for it with some second chance points. Uh, the, the Blue Jays out rebounding the Braves by 24 to 17. If, if the Blue Jays are going to look at a stat, it's the assist to turnover ratio right now. You've got five assists, eight turnovers. That's not going to make Greg McDermott very happy. Not at all. And this is a team that is not built on one on one, more so sharing the ball. Team assists. Again, only five team assists on nine made baskets. Not a whole lot to be excited about for Greg McDermott, but you find yourself tie ball game, second 20 minutes, anything can happen, so you're fine. Looking for some positives. you got to look to the freshman, and that's Doug McDermott, who had a great first half, 11 rebounds, one shy of tying his career high. He also has eight points. Yeah, his consistency and his pursuit of the basketball is just outstanding, and that's one of his defensive rebounds. He had, again, 11 in the first half, and then here, uh, here he is trailing the play. Knocking it down from downtown. Did just a great job. Again, 8 points, 11 rebounds, and 17 minutes of action. Just a tremendous first half. And for the Bradley Braves, it was all Dyrica Sims Edwards. Again, he had 14 points in the first half. Was 6 of 10 from the floor. So the rest of the Bradley Braves outside of him was 4 for 20 from the field. He was the bright spot. You better believe Andrew Warren's going to get going in this second half. Keep your eye on number 24 to take a look at Echenique be the beneficiary of an offensive rebound, but Andrew Warren has to score, and he'll be aggressive in the second half. Time now for our Meet the Jays segment, brought to you by the Nebraska Soybean Board. Today we meet Josh Jones, a 6'2", 195-pound guard from Omaha. He's a redshirt sophomore, went to Omaha Central, won a state championship. Uh, he, he's really come on, kind of a streaky player, but uh, has really come on and been a heck of a contributor for the Blue Jays. Second half coming up. It is tied at 25 at Carver Arena. You're watching Creighton Blue Jay Basketball on KMTV Action 3 News. Welcome back to Carver Arena in Peoria, Illinois. The Blue Jays and the Braves tied up at 25. Have your keys to, you've seen the first half, have the keys changed at all for you, Nick? Not really. It's, just, it's the same situation. I really think uh, one of my keys for, for the Jays was going to make be make Warren a volume scorer. I think that's going to be really important. If he shoots, you know, 50, 55% from the field in the second half, the Jays could be in trouble. They have to contain him. He has to play well and score for Bradley to be successful. And again, in that first half, only three points, one for five shooting. So the keys haven't changed. Jahans Managa will start the second half in replace of Josh Jones for the Blue Jays. Josh has done a pretty good job of scoring the ball when he's been implemented into the starting lineup, but the one thing he hasn't done is rebound at all. He now only has four total rebounds through 11 conference games. This is the 12th. Here we go right away, right on cue. You said that Warren would start to heat up coming off the screen. In a lot of different ways. He's got to make him work. Echeneke loses it. That's one area I thought he'd really be a lot better is making decisions on the block. He has 12 assists and 33 turnovers on the season inside. Nice pass from Dyrica Sims Edwards. He's been terrific. Get in the paint, making plays again. With Braves really struggled to score. He stepped up, made some shots, and that's a nice pass inside for Sims Edwards. Braves have scored the first four points in the second half. We like it. Caught a clean, I think he's going to shoot that three, Travis. Five in the shot clock. Corver. And Echenique is there for the rebound. Antoine Young for three. He must misses off the front of the rim. Cody Dunson. 6-0 run for the Braves to start 
They got to a good start in the first half, and a good start here in the second half. And this is something that Creighton's really struggled with is bad starts at the beginning of both 20 minutes. McDermott hits the three. He now has the double-double. 11 and 11 for the freshman. He's still got a lot of basketball to go. Great drive. Wow, what strength from Sims Edwards. A lot of people think you've got to go fast to the basket. Don Wooden says, be quick, don't hurry. There, he was definitely not in a hurry. He was strong going to the rim. Managa for three. Back to back by Fectus for the Blue Jays. Driving on the baseline, driving basically into the heart of the defense is so difficult to deal with defensively. You see Antoine Young get a piece of the paint, kick it to Managa. Foul on Managa. There's been a statistical correction as well in the book as they've taken one rebound away from Doug McDermott. He's now with 10. But he still has the double-double. <laughs> Something tells me he'll get that 11th rebound here very shortly. And you, you can hear obviously everything Greg McDermott's yelling to his team. Just yelled at Greg Rechnicke to get up when defending those ball screens. You're allowing Sims Edwards and those guys to come off too clean. By then, it's too hard on the guard to be able to cut him off, and he's got a free pass. So Lawson's got to get up on these ball screens here a little bit. Yeah, that's just too easy of a shot for Sims Edwards. Maybe another second chance opportunity for the Braves. Fresh 35. Here's Warren. Good drive there from Warren. Got to make him work for his baskets. Look at Dodie Johnson guarding Antoine Young all the way in the paint. Antoine draws the foul and he'll shoot two. So it makes Antoine Young tough when he's guarding. Watch as Dodie Johnson's just thinking about sliding to cut him off, and then Antoine Young is going to stop there on a dime and just jump right into him. And so you're thinking about sliding your feet, working to beat him to that spot in the middle, and get ready to contest. And then out of the blue, he kind of stops and jumps into you. That's something he's learned along the way from his years of playing basketball. Rare miss by Antoine Young. 77% free throw shooter on the season. Goes one for two, that trip. Antoine had 10 assists last time. Great play, Bradley, and he's already got five tonight. This afternoon, excuse me. There's that 11th <laughs> rebound for McDermott. <laughs> take long. Antoine Young. Foul on Kenny Lawson. It's a 2 3 zone from Creighton. Greg McDermott say stick into it until they score, until they score, excuse me. Inside, it's Egoff against McDermott. Good defense by Doug. Goes right back, Egoff trying to save it. Numbers. Doug McDermott. The foul on Dyrikas Sims Edwards. Now we got a timeout on the floor. 15:35 to go at Carver Arena. The Braves on top by three. Back to Peoria right after these messages. Bigger or better? Every day we choose or the other. Owned and operated by local physical therapists, Excel Physical Therapy works hard to give you nothing but the best. Sophisticated, proven treatments made better with friendly, personal attention. Excel Physical Therapy knows you have a choice when it comes to physical therapy, and we treat you like it every minute of every visit. Excel Physical Therapy, the special treatment you deserve. 
Navigating the law can be confusing. It's natural to have questions. Now there's a free, easy way to get them answered. The Omaha Legal Line. Pick up the phone and dial 888-48-LAW-FOR-YOU. That's 888-485-2948. Or log on to omahalegalline.com. Have questions about a personal injury case? Call the Omaha Legal Line today for a free confidential answer. 888-48-LAW-FOR-YOU. Personal injury services provided by Hoffman O'Brien, Wolf, and Lathrop. Attorneys focusing on personal injury cases. Have you heard? ESPN Radio has moved to AM 590. Mike and Mike got Endomic and Sue with us here. Do you have a nickname? Like what do people just, on, on, when they get to know you, do they call you Endomic all the time? Or do you uh, have like nobody story? really calls me by Endomic. Uh, everybody everybody call? calls me Sue. AM 590, Omaha's ESPN Radio. Ah, it's the herd on ESPN Radio, wherever you may be. And however... You may be listening to our show. AM 590 is Omaha's new home for ESPN Radio. This guy's prepared to go home <laughs> later on. He's got the big winter boots on. I wish I had those. They make those in black dress shoes like that? No. <laughs> I know. Jay's getting their feet set behind the arc. Take a look at the first one here. Doug McDermott, little pick and pop, roll and replace. Fills that open spot, buries the three, and then when you get... You give up penetration, especially that baseline. Collapses the defense. You're able to find shooters. Giants Managa right in front of Greg McDermott. Buries the triple. But it's been all Bradley here to get things started as they've jumped out to a early three-point lead to start the second half. As they're five for nine from the floor in the second half, Jay's just two for seven from the field. And the biggest thing is that Andrew Warren's got a couple baskets to go down. Got a running layup and a, th and a jump shot off a of screen. So we're back to action in Peoria. Hope you've enjoyed Creighton Blue Jay basketball all season long on KMTV Action 3 News. This is our last scheduled game. Who knows? You never know if another one pops up, but uh, this is the last one we have scheduled. It's been a fast year, hasn't it, it, it Nick? Has. I've enjoyed it, partner. It's been fun. It's hard to believe that this, is, this could be it. Timeout by Antoine Young. That'll be a full timeout as well. 15-29, a timeout on the floor. We'll be back to Carver Arena right after these messages. I've got five new value deals that don't compromise on quality. Pick the pizza, pick the size, with the quality you expect from Godfather's Pizza. Real cheese, fresh dough, toppings piled high. Five value deals you can't refuse, starting at $4.99. It was just a normal day until... What is this? If you have something oh, no. like this backing up in your basement, call Burton Plumbing. Get Mommy the phone. Your Burton technician will quickly diagnose and solve all of your drain problems. Right now, Burton is offering $99 mainline drain opening. Let Burton Plumbing take care of the pain in your drain. All gone. Just call Burton. Just call Burton. They will fix it right. There's no better way for me to start my day than with a good run. There's really no other exercise that gives you the same feeling. I ran the Lincoln Marathon. It was a great experience, and the adrenaline from the crowd was amazing. If you can get yourself to go for the run, it's going to feel good, and you're going to feel good mentally. When I help somebody, I like to ask them what they're training for and what's motivating them. I'm Missy Khan, and I'm a running expert at Shields. Right now at Old Chicago, new chef-inspired creations. Try the Winter Harvest Salad with balsamic chicken or the mouth-watering USDA Prime Toast Ghana Burger. Now for a limited time, only at Old Chicago. Blue Jays will have the basketball, but forced to take a quick timeout before a five-second call. That last possession. Yeah, and, and those are the type of plays that sometimes can irritate a coach and actually come back to bite you. In a game that looks like we're is headed down to a close finish, timeouts are really crucial, especially for a guy like Greg McDermott who likes to manufacture baskets out of some set plays and usually got to call a timeout to do those sorts of things. So Jays only have three timeouts left. Just a little thing, but could ultimately end up catching up to you. Jim Less in his ninth year. He's coaching where he played, one of the all-time Bradley Brave greats. Many people in Omaha remember Jim Les is a member of the Omaha Racers. Yeah. That's before your time almost, buddy. It is. <laughs> it was before my time. I do remember. I remember those days. Tell me about that, though. 
The old Exarvin Coliseum. The Bradley's end here endure a lot this year, obviously with the injuries. Commander Scalco was their floor general and scored over a thousand points in his career for Bradley and then Taylor Brown as well with the heart issue. So those two guys were going to be probably their two leading scorers, and they lost a boat inside the loss. It's going to be great basketball. Ten on the shot clock. Last time they were low on a shot clock, they ended up trying to go to McDermott, see what Jays want to do next. Lob to McDermott. Has it taken right from him. Good Warren. Bucket in transition. Braves up by five. Short burst of speed. That's what that play was. From free throw line to free throw line. Warren sprint, out sprint everybody down the floor and created a passing angle for Dyrica Sims Edwards and finished. That's, tough how, that's how they got to defend the post. They really are going to struggle if they play dead behind. So Eagle fights around and gets another steal as the Jays stay in this 2-3 zone. Now they can come out and match out. There's Warren. Egoff has position. Goes back to Dust. Dyrica Sims Edwards. That was a long shot. Jimmer range, as they like to call it now. There's a range that says it's Jimmer range. You got your own <laughs> zip code on, uh, on the floor. It's been amazing to think that the Jays earlier this season. Held him to 13 points. The, the, tied for his season low. Jays did a great job, but it was Davies late in that game, their interior presence that put the great Blue Jays away. <laughs> Does it block? Ooh, they dodged a bullet because Warren was streaking behind all the defenders. He's going to get a layup. Yeah. Warren just wants to shoot. You can see it. He's feeling it. 39 32 Braves. But you've seen him doing a lot of different ways. Driving to the hoop, off screens, in transition. And counted by Doug McDermott. Doug's got a great feel for when to just turn and go. Watch him, he, he could just has a feel for that. If there's going to be traffic to catch and assess the situation, or if he can just turn and go right up to the rim. It's something oftentimes you're just born with, or it comes from just years and years and years of playing basketball. And, and he was a guy that grew about four or five inches in high school, and early on in his career he played on the perimeter, so that's where you see him have a lot of good skills with the basketball that helps him on the interior now because he's playing at the power forward spot that's a big basket too big basket as well blue jays have had success on the road at least in the state of illinois josh jones with a foul got a piece of warren now warren will go Look to complete the old-fashioned three-point play. Take, take a look at it. Watch how he's going to use a step back here to create space. Drive that right foot in, create the space for the jump shot, and then a little too much body contact will send Warren to the free throw line for the chance for the three-point play. And yeah, everybody in the gym it. heard say that right there. But you, knew, you knew it was coming. You knew Warren was going to have that flurry of points, but you just got to make him work for everything he gets. He's scoring too, too, too efficiently right here. Echenike comes down with the rebound, uses his body but can't finish. Going after it hard, Bradley basketball. Danger time because Creighton's a team that isn't built to come from behind because they don't score in spurts and create turnovers and able to really get easy baskets in that way, so you don't want to get down too much to the Blue Jays here. Side again, back out to Antoine Young. No foul call. They are letting him play. A lot of contact there. Coaching staff with Jay's pretty upset. A 
I mentioned the Blue Jays have won at Illinois State. They've won at Southern Illinois. They've never, ever won all three games against the Braves, Illinois State, and Southern on the road in the same season. Looking to pull off the trifecta, the road trifecta today. McDermott in and out. Echenique with a rebound. Gives it back to McDermott. He'll go to the line. Doug upset with himself. I think with the miss on the three and then the miss on the two good looks for a good score, but he'll go to the free throw line. Timeout on the floor. The Blue Jays down 42-35. Back to Peoria, Illinois after these messages. When temperatures drop, winter cold can actually come right through a typical dual pane window. But Champion windows with our exclusive Comfort 365 glass have nearly twice the insulating value of a typical dual pane window, which can help keep the cold outside where it belongs. Right now, save 30% when you buy five or more Champion windows. Call today for a free in-home estimate. When you compare and choose Champion, you win every time. If you have a satellite dish, your blood pressure just went up. Because you know the frustration of losing your satellite TV reception in severe weather. In fact, almost half of satellite customers surveyed in the Midwest reported two or more weather-related outages in a three-month period. Dump your dish and make the switch to Cox. Get reliable service with over 1,000 HD choices. Want to know how? Visit a Cox Solution store near you or call today. Vane, Omaha's most experienced vein care clinic. Call Dr. Stephen Torpy today. You know, being a cameraman is tough, tough duty. I. This is who <laughs> says basketball is not a full contact yeah. sport. Whoa! Right into your living room, right there. Well, we well, got leg up in the air. You know it's good. <laughs> you got you got leg up in the air. Boy, you mentioned Warren coming out of the halftime break, and he's been the force for the Braves. 11 second-half points for Warren. And he's done it in a lot of different ways, and he's done it efficiently. And efficiently is the key word. You know he's going to score, but you got to make him work. you got to make him take a lot of shots to get his points. As we take a look at the crime scene there where Warren... We send so did we send somebody to the emergency, emergency room? room? I tell you what, i got to thank Theo Mercer and the crew at Telepro. No doubt. They did a great job on short notice. You know, you just don't show up at an arena and get set up in 30 seconds, get ready to go. It, uh, they got the call about 10 o'clock this morning that this game was going to be moved up to 3 o'clock. And Theo and the, the good folks at Telepro jumped right into action, got us game ready, and here we are. McDermott hits the first one. Theo's been with us ever since we started doing Creighton games. On action three days, way back in 2001. You were still at Lincoln South. Were you, was, were you yes. in junior high then? I was in Southeast. <laughs> <laughs> making sure I didn't fumble the snap, handle the ball. Uh, handle old, ball Nick Ball, you're making rude. me feel old. <laughs> Bradley with a five point lead, 20 on the shot clock. SDK got up and edged that ball screen a lot better. Tyreek oh, oh, Sims Edwards just fights through the Daryl Ashford got a hand on that. And now he just muscled that thing. He willed it. You've seen two really strong drives from Tyreek Sims Edwards this half. And there, just through the contact, able to get the finish. Side, McDermott back out to Antoine Young. Nine on the shot clock. Antoine for three. Big bucket by the junior from Bellevue West High School. 
Jays down four. That's a great job again by Doug McDermott. Post, repost, invite the double team and know exactly where guys are at spaced on the floor and find a shooter. And it's Antoine Young who knocks it down. Again, big shot. Now a foul. Kayla Corva holding Andrew Warren off the ball. As once a guy gets going, you really got to tighten things up off the ball because he does a good job of moving and scoring. Look at Brossom. He draws the foul. That's going to be on. It's like Managa. Just didn't quite get there in time. That's a good job. Managa has been that charge taker all year. Look, he's just going to be a half a count too late. He's sliding just over to try and take that charge as Prosser was rolling to the basket off the pass from Andrew Warren. Prosser, not a good free throw shooter on the season, but he rattles that one in. 41% on the season. Gets just real quiet in here. It's a different feel. Prosser hits them both. Six point Bradley lead. Personal foul on Andrew Warren. See, nice little set play to really give Antoine Young just a ball screen and a driving angle to get that hedge man way behind the play because he had to defend a back screen as Doug McDermott set one for Gregory Echenique. All that action is to free up Antoine Young, give him just an angle to drive it, the paint. There again, he does a good job of initiating the contact go to the line. Antoine hits them both. You would expect the Blue Jays to keep it close. 2-3 zone, you have to find Warren in this situation. He's in your area, can't leave him. Prosser has it blocked by Echenique. Good hustle by Managa. Creighton's upset. Shot clock should not have reset because the ball never touched the rim. That's a mistake on the clock manager here. Creighton's favorite wanting answers. They're saying that he saved it on a position. On a change of possession yeah. on the block shot and the save. Shot clock was reset because the Creighton player had enough possession to throw the ball in the back. Well, I've right. never seen a PA announcer <laughs> take it under his own judgment to, to make a clarification. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that at, over the uh, over our microphones, but that's the first time I've ever heard that. It's a full-on justification yeah. for the reset of the shot. The the Nevertheless, it's a big play, and again, same thing. So I know you're in a zone, but if he's in your area, you got to be basically matched up man to man and can't leave him. Turnover. Here comes Antoine Young. Takes it all by himself. Can't finish. You know, you're possibly going to get two out of it, but that's one I thought Antoine Young should have given up. Watch him here. Warren completely commits to him. There, look him all the way over there. That's man of guys all by himself for a layup. The second, you got to push it with some purpose, but the second you see that single defender commits your side. You've got to deliver the ball, give it up, and get, at least get two out of it. But Antoine Young's going to get two anyways, most likely. So Antoine makes it a two-point game. Credit the Blue Jays. Yeah, they, they were on the ropes. Yeah, they were on the ropes and have battled back into it. It was 42-35. to 35. 
A nice little run for Creighton as again they were against the ropes pretty good and let's see what the zone can do to the Bradley Braves. Moore in the long three. Barber Arena, tough place to play, tough place to win. Echeneke. And now they say he, it was a late foul called by Jerry Pollard. Going to be on Andrew Warren. Third personal on Warren. Take a look at it, Echeneke. Just a couple crab dribbles into the middle, clears some space, and definitely contact on Warren, and Echeneke will go to the line now. Echenike, the soft touch, if you want to call it that. <laughs> He's a guy that's struggled a little bit as of late. But that one ties it up in 46. Jays will stick in this zone until Bradley Cruz they can figure it out. I think Jim Les wants to talk things over, how they want to attack the zone. Tied at 46, the Blue Jays have gotten back into it with defense. Yeah, switch to a zone, just give you a different look. You know, Bradley had gotten comfortable against the man-to-man -man setting ball screens and driving the ball at the basket. Warren had got going, scoring as well. Sometimes you just got to switch something up, give him a new look, make him feel a little bit uncomfortable. And the zone has done that. Can't stress enough though, Andrew Warren's the guy you got to find. So an 11-4 run. Great. After Bradley jumped out to a seven-point lead, so a great job by the Jays on the road in a very awkward environment, an interesting day, a weird day to respond to a little surge from the Braves. Greg McDermott still during that timeout looking for clarification on that shot clock ruling. Rikus. Good move. He's a good player. I mean, he's a streaky player. He's got great explosiveness around the rim to finish. Corver for three. Echeneke is going to get the rebound. Throws it back. Corver gets it. Echeneke thought maybe a half a second about that 15-footer. Look at Gregory Echeneke using his body with the left hand. Good feel, good offensive rebound, and a great job by Caleb Corver to go up and get the ball that was saved by Echeneke to get it ultimately back to him and finish the bucket at the rim. That's the zone will kind of bait you into those shots, and Dunson got baited into one. Not a great three-point shooter, 11 of 31 from downtown. Time out on the floor. I tell you what, they may have moved the game up to start a little bit earlier, but it's been everything that's been advertised. It's a good one. Tied at 48, back to Carver Arena after these tests. Deals, deals, and more deals continue. It's the grand opening celebration of Nebraska Furniture Mart's premier living room furniture showcase. Find amazing savings in every department. In furniture and flooring, get 10, 12, even 15% off the everyday low price with qualifying purchases. Like this flex steel sofa. It's just $674. Save $75 off the everyday low price. Look at this great deal in electronics. And this one in appliances. Plus get 18-month financing. Even enter to win prizes at Nebraska Furniture Mart's store-wide celebration. I was in a rut, plain and simple. Burger, fries, soda, eat, repeat. Until someone handed me an original Runza sandwich. Seasoned ground beef wrapped in piping hot fresh bread. Was this some sort of trap? No, it was an awakening. It was a new lease on life. Who knows, maybe next week I'll try a salad. Okay, baby steps. My name is Carl and I'm a Runza addict. 
I am really distracted by this sandwich. I'm probably gonna veer in your lane. Watch out. Oh, excuse me. I'm putting my makeup on, so I'm probably gonna cut you off. Oh, hey guys, I'm gonna be talking on the phone when I'm backing out, so I won't be paying attention. Accidents don't announce themselves. That's why we've engineered our SUVs to help protect you with 360 degrees of safety. See Lexus of Omaha and Lexus of Lincoln. Time for our Golf Tech Ultimate Drive in the second half. It's Gregory Echenique. And we're going to see it another look at it. Yeah, great job by Echenique. But then watch how Caleb Corver is going to look up the floor. You look at the pivot. That gets Echenique time to seal and then the timing to deliver it. That play was made by a great save by Echenique and then a great get of a loose ball by Caleb Corver and then the use of the pivot to look like he's going to reverse the ball, then throw it right back in there to Echenique. Great job, big sequence for the Jays. It's tied at 48. That was our Golf Tech ultimate drive of the second half. Tied at 48, Blue Jays with the basketball. Erika Sims Edwards had 19 at Creighton. Early in the month, he's got 20 tonight. That's a career high. He's been a fourth for the Braves. Doug McDermott now back into the game. He's been a fourth for the Blue Jays. That's a good double double. And Caleb tried that same thing. Dribble up the floor, the reverse pivot, throw back. Ten on the shot clock. Inside to McDermott. The defensive sequence for the Braves. That's a nice set play there from Jim Last to screen the middle of the zone to free up Warren for a jumper. Just couldn't get it to go down. That's good coaching for Jim Last. Turnover by the Blue Jays. Here comes Sims Edwards, gives it up to Eastman. Finishes in transition. Not sure what happened there. It looked like Antoine Young was going to feed the post and at the last second decided not to and it just slipped out of his hands. But in defense leading to offense for Bradley. Corver. A little pump fake, yeah. dribble right in and hits it. Shampoo fake, head and shoulders, one dribble, knocks it down. See the adjustment to try and get Warren in the middle of that zone. The ball foul on Echenique. First team foul on big double zero. Yeah, it looked like Echenique was almost trying to get out of the way as he was backpedaling. But there still was enough contact. Jays are going to have to, if they're going to stick in that 2 3 zone, going to have to communicate where Andrew Warren is on the floor. And he had been roaming on the perimeter or along the baseline. And now it looks like the adjustment Jim Les wants to make is to get him in the middle of that 2 3 zone. Eagle hits the first one. Bradley. Back on top, exchanging leads and ties here. Be smart, guys. One shot. It almost feels like a birdie putt at the Masters type of environment. Hush over the crowd. Two point lead for the Braves. Gahan's <laughs> Managa. Big three-pointer by Jahans Managa. The Blue Jays now with the lead. Ooh, the Canadian Red Bull, a little confidence. Step in, missed his first three three-pointers of the game. Bad. Knocked down two here in the second half. They're going to put Egoff at the line again. Second personal foul on Antoine Young. Seen twice, Creighton's. Backside players rotating over to take away the roll man to the rim. Be a little bit late. You saw Managa earlier in the half. Try and rotate over, take a charge, get a block call. The same thing with Antoine Young in that scenario. 
He got ties it at 53. You got to wonder, the Braves are feeling their legs right now. A lot of these guys have been in there a lot. Close to the Jays keeping that 11 game losing streak. And the Braves will start thinking about that. They want to win so bad they can taste it. So Egoff fouls Kenny Lawson. You can see Caleb Gordon saying, come to the ball. Sick of throwing it in there and seeing a few turnovers. As you can see, Caleb wanted to throw right in there. And Kenny Lawson didn't move his feet to keep Egoff in front of him, but was able to get it and knock it down. Excuse me, get fouled and go to free throw. Third foul on Doug McDermott. One and one. So now, Braves one and one. Warren. One. Warren's going to be at the line. Great free throw shooter. Hey, pinch up, one shot, one shot, box out. Back up. Back to a two-point lead for the Braves. Jim West, ninth year here. Of course, went to the Sweet 16 back in 2006. That was a heck of a ball team he had. A very athletic team. Defeated Kansas in the first round, Pittsburgh in the second round. Down three, 20 on the shot clock. Turnover. Eastman trying to take a charge. Flustered McDermott enough. Turn it over. Tyrikis. Yeah, he had to push it. back. Yeah, he did. And this is where some broken floor situations where I think Greg McDermott wants to see his Jays attack. But... Bradley recovers. There's Managa. Banks it in for three. Tied at 56. Timeout, Greg McDermott. <laughs> Bank is open. Managa can't help but kind of smile as everybody's saying. He didn't call it, but that's a big shot. Four for the game as you see him use the square. It goes down. Those are the ones you breathe, breathe a huge sigh of relief. This one what takes off and you say, oh boy, that's long. He knew it all the way, though. He knew it all the way. Big shot for the freshman, though. And I've liked how he's approached things. Obviously got the starting nod last game here. This game came off the bench, and sometimes he has a tendency to want to maybe do a little too much. But I think as the seasons wore on, he's really done a pretty good job of pick and choosing his spots. And to have the courage to step up and even take that shot speaks volumes to not only the confidence he has himself, but the confidence Greg McDermott and the coaching staff have. They even have him in the game in this scenario. Tie in the game at 56. 2-3 zone now for the Blue Jays. Braves have never been able to create any distance between themselves and the Blue Jays. Tyreekus oh, sends Edwards. Slow roll that zone. You still got to move on the pass. And sends Edwards too athletic to be closing out to him in the corner for Gregory Achenike. Good way to be strong. There's the steal by Warren. And look how he gets it. He didn't dunk it. Looked like he was, but big turnover for the Jays. You've got to see the pass before you make it. You can't just blindly reverse the ball. Big turnover. Warren has been the difference in the second half for the Braves. Jays down four.
15 on the shot clock. Antoine Young's got to come get the ball and make a play. So you got to have amnesia as a player. Forget about the last play. It's all about this one. Five on the shot clock. Antoine Young off the front of the rim. Tough miss for the Blue Jays. Under three to go. Here's Warren again. Cody Dunson in and out. But Dyrica Sims Edwards fights for the offensive rebound. A timeout by Jim Les. 32nd timeout. Offensive rebounding now. As little things down the stretch have cost Creighton games. Turnovers and offensive rebounding. You see Doty Dunson again, a little hesitant to let it fly, but look at the backside. Manigan set a run to the rim. You got to run and find a body as he didn't go check out Sims Edwards. You got to go make body contact and clear him out. And a good timeout for Jim Les, sensing that he wasn't going to be able to make a play from there. The young kids, you can't just turn and run to the rim because there aren't too many rebounds you're going to get standing underneath the hoop. You got to go find a body, create space, and then go find the ball. But a great play from Sims Edwards to get an offensive rebound. Should have media timeout next dead ball. See what the Braves can do after coming out of the uh, timeout. Four, looking to extend it to six, possibly seven. With under three to play. There's Warren. Nails it. Three pointer, seven point lead for Bradley. He knew it was coming. Based on out of bounds plays, 95% of them are to Andrew Warren. Long developing one, but he knocks it down. Out of bounds. Timeout on the floor. The Blue Jays have two minutes and 16 seconds to make up a seven point deficit. You're watching Creighton Blue Jay basketball live from Peoria, Illinois, and Carver Arena on KMTV Action 3 News. From the look on Mike's face, that little chick's at stake. Hey, what you thought it would be? So, Mike, give you one more. Get a set time for Yeah, it's four Ooh. times at stake. Four times of thick cuts of juicy marinated succulent steak. We all say, wow, that's like a whole honking cow. What is it, Mike? What steak? It's four times of steak. Four times of steak. Four times of steak. Old McDonald's had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had some pigs. Oh, wait a minute, he doesn't have pigs anymore. Oh, and on that farm he had some cows. Ah, uh, sorry, no more cows. And on that farm he had nope. some... Um, was it cluck cluck? Sorry, no more chickens. You see, the grown-ups didn't speak up when animal agriculture was threatened here in Nebraska. What? So the animals left. Meat prices went up. Huh? Remember, you can give this story a happy ending. Support animal agriculture in Nebraska. Bigger or better? Every day we choose one over the other. Owned and operated by local physical therapists, Excel Physical Therapy works hard to give you nothing but the best. Sophisticated, proven treatments made better with friendly, personal attention. Excel Physical Therapy knows you have a choice when it comes to physical therapy, and we treat you like it every minute of every visit. Excel Physical Therapy, the special treatment you deserve. Welcome back to Carver Arena. The Blue Jays down seven. Two minutes, 16 seconds to go. Well, again, everything to Andrew Warren. Here comes Echenique. probably going to get out and hedge that screen a little bit. Maybe a little bit of a moving screen, but you've got to get out and take away the opportunity for Andrew Warren to knock down the shot. See here, he's going to get a screen from Prosser. There, no one in the corner to help hedge and buy Caleb Corver a little bit of time. Good execution by Bradley. You, there's one guy you gotta find. It's that man right there. 20 points for Warren. The difference in the second half. First thing you said when the second half started was watch Andrew Warren. He's been pretty efficient as well. 18 on the shot clock for the Blue Jays with the basketball. Very for Creighton, you gotta 
Stay calm. Still a lot of game left. Don't have to start casting threes. Antoine Young. Tough shot by Antoine. Five-point Bradley lead. We're at the two-minute mark. This is where it's difficult because Creighton's not a aggressive style of defense. And there they tried to do a three-quarter court press and they wanted to cut a trap right around half court. Couldn't get it. Now Dodie Dunson will go to the free throw line. Dodie Dunson, a 55% free throw shooter. Got to block out here. This is that one. Everybody's got a rebound. You got to pinch and get a shooter. Misses them both. Long rebound to the Blue Jays. Great needs a bucket. Down five. McDermott for three. Are you kidding me? The freshman comes up big again. Blue Jays down two. Well, he got that off in a hurry. Great job by Caleb Cord, a little curl to free him up for a three-pointer in the corner. What a shot from Doug McDermott. And Dunson's going to go back to one. The, the plan back will be <laughs> the plan will be to foul Cody Dunson. Doug McDermott, huge shot by the freshman. Go makes down. that one. Take a look at how quickly Doug McDermott gets his feet set and knocks down that shot. Caleb Corver using him as a decoy to hard curl it, run into his man, Doug McDermott's defender, and he drills it right in front of the Blue Jay bench. Dunson hits them both. Four point lead. McDermott again for three. That time he misses. There's the fight for it. They're calling on McDermott. That's four on Doug McDermott. I don't think they were really trying to foul there. I think they were actually trying to set a trap. To take a look at it. It's a little bit of contact, but I think they were going to have a good trapping opportunity. Johnson coming up big. Extends the lead to five. Make it six. Greg McDermott says he wants a timeout. Still not happy about the foul called on Doug. But you got to let it go. I understand you're arguing for that next call, but. Got a huge possession right now. You got to think about what you want to do offensively. Subbed in Kenny Lawson Jr. In these situations, they usually like to use him as a, a pick and pop player. So set a ball screen for Antoine Young with Lawson and he can pop for a three or roll to the basket and let Doug McDermott fill up. Either way, again, six point game, two possession game. I'm always an advocate of extending the game and maximizing possessions and make them earn it at the free throw line. Again, they were up eight with a minute and change left on, Il on Illinois State right in this building and lost that game. So Bradley obviously has struggled to close out games even when they've had opportunities to win. Make them knock down free throws. You don't necessarily have to go for a three. What would you do coming out of the timeout? What are you looking for? I, I would go to the rim. I would let Antoine Young free him up. It doesn't necessarily have to be a ball screen. Just go right to the basket. But here comes Kenny Lawson. Want to do a pick and pop, and they switch it. Antoine Young. Three-pointer goes off the front of the rim. Warren with the rebound. I want to foul him.
And that's a nice job by Bradley to recognize that they're probably just going to do a pick and pop and instead of hedging and trying to recover on the on ball screen on the perimeter you just switch it that takes away any pick and pop opportunity and you ultimately force a long range jump shot and rebound Warren hits that one great free throw shooter 88% Gotta go, Not, time's not of the essence. A little unorganized right now. Gotta go make a play. Here's the fight for it. They say Doty Dunson called timeout. That means the Braves will have the basketball with 25.1 seconds to go. Take another look at it. I don't know if Bradley ever fully had possession. I would agree with you. You know, it was still loose, and Warren, before Warren actually had it, Dunson was calling timeout. Yeah. It was a bang, bang play. That was pretty close. Again, you got to let it go. But that was just disorganization on the floor from Creighton's standpoint didn't really get organized in what they wanted to do offensively and they were all looking at each other couldn't get in the right spots and ultimately Antoine Young had to drive in and try and create something. Tough one for the Blue Jays. Very difficult. Tough scenario here. You Dealing with a team that is hungry. You're dealing with the weather. You're dealing yeah. with time change. Foul on Wayne Reynolds. So Bradley's 18.5 seconds away from snapping an 11 game losing streak. Braves would pick up their first Missouri Valley Conference win. And Bradley just made more plays down the stretch than the Jays did. Creighton was on the ropes and battled back, but down the stretch it was all Andrew Warren and Bradley Got stops defensively and offensively were able to convert. The Jays just weren't able to do that. What's going to sting about this is they have to stay the night in Peoria again. And they may have to stay here tomorrow night. And then you got to think about practicing for your next game. I don't know when their day off was going to be, but all these things come into question and you're stuck on the road. Lawson with a rebound. Time's running out as McDermott will get the dunk to miss. He misses the dunk. And kind of the way of the day the Blue Jays day has gone. As the Bradley Braves win 69 to 61, picking up their first Missouri Valley Conference win. Improving to are now 7 and 16 overall, 1 and 11 in the Valley. The Blue Jays are 14 and 10 overall, 6 and 6 in the Missouri Valley Conference. Let's send it over to Nick Baugh, who's with Coach Craig McDermott. Coach, obvious question: Great. Really, start affect this game at all? Uh, it shouldn't. I mean, we got to be ready to play, and we weren't. And, uh, and every once in a while, life's going to throw you a curveball, and you got to respond to it. And obviously, we didn't respond to it to start the game. You guys battled back. What ultimately was the difference down the stretch? Well, you know, we, we didn't execute very well on either end of the floor. We got some good out of our zone, but, uh, you know, some breakdowns in guarding the dribble really hurt us the second half. Last thing, Andrew Warren, big second half. What was the difference? Kept him in check in the first half, just one for five, and then he got free a little bit. Yeah, it was very similar to our game in, uh, in Omaha that, uh, you know, we kept him in check, and then he tried to get things going off the dribble, and we really allowed that to happen, and that's unfortunate. All right, Coach. Back to you, Travis. 69-61, your final. We'll be back to Carver Arena in Peoria, Illinois.
to wrap things up after these messages. Featuring the brightest screen available, the Samsung Mesmerize Android-powered phone is also a dazzling one. It lets you take, watch, and share HD videos, and message faster using swipe technology. Now at U.S. Cellular, get buy one, get one free deals on all Android-powered phones. You'll get a Samsung Mesmerize free when you buy one. Activate both, switch, and get $200 in credit. Only at U.S. Cellular. Since when does using less cheese, less toppings, and knocking off a few bucks become a value? I've got five new value deals that don't compromise on quality. Pick the pizza, pick the size, with the quality you expect from Godfather's Pizza. Real cheese, fresh dough, toppings piled high. Five value deals you can't refuse, starting at $4.99. Get wise. Don't compromise. Godfather's Pizza. Do it. Caring hands. Hands skilled in the art of healing. Hands that will earn your trust. Place your adult and pediatric needs into the caring hands of Dr. Thomas J. Dobelman, fellowship-trained ENT physician and surgeon and founder of the Dobelman Head and Neck Cancer Institute. Hands that patients and their families can trust. Dr. Thomas J. Dobelman, Omaha's leading ear, nose, and throat physician and surgeon. Visit healthlinksonaction3news.com for more information. Our Burton Plumbing player of the game is the freshman Doug McDermott, 19 points, 16 rebounds, another double-double. He was absolutely spectacular, but in a losing effort for the Blue Jays, dropping to the Bradley Braves, 69-61. Doug McDermott, our Burton Plumbing player of the game. When your plumbing's hurting, just call Burton. A tough loss for the Blue Jays. Very tough. Tough scenario, obviously. 0-11 Bradley. I know that record does not indicate a tough game, but they're a capable team. Early start time. Things kind of snowballed for the Jays, and it was all Andrew Warren in that second half. 20 second, 20 second half points for Mr. Warren. Blue Jays now 14 and 10 overall, 6 and 5 in the Missouri Valley Conference. Been a great season of Creighton Blue Jay basketball right here on KMTV Action 3 News. I want to thank Nick Boss. It's been another Travis. fine yep. season. Our good crew at Telepro, all the great crew back at KMTV Action 3 News. I'm Travis Justice. Thanks for watching. This has been Creighton Blue Jay basketball on KMTV Action 3 News.